The first thing I'm going to do is set up the scene. We'll start off by creating a background. To do this, I simply just create a cube, give it a name BG for background. I then position the background at 0, 0, 1, and then scale it accordingly to fit the camera. The next thing you want to do is create a materials folder so you can create a material for the background. Then go ahead and create a new material. After creating the material, you'll want to give it a color. I like to choose red because it gives a good contrast between a green laser and the background. You'll also want to decrease the smoothness to zero to keep the light from becoming too intense in some areas of the background. Now it's time to create the laser pointer. To do this, you just simply create another cube. Then you just manipulate the cube to make it look like a laser. In my case, it's just going to be a very thin block. I'm also going to change the camera projection to orthographic for simplicity. Now that the laser is done, we're going to create a scripts folder. We're going to have two scripts called shoot laser and laser beam. The first thing you'll want to do is open up the laser beam script. We won't be using the start or update methods, so go ahead and get rid of them. We also won't be using mono behavior. Now we can start setting up the laser beam. This is going to take three parameters, one for the start, starting position of the laser, the direction of the laser, and the material of the laser. This script is going to be used to create the actual laser beam. The laser beam will be refreshed every game update so that it is in sync with the position and orientation of the laser pointer. This means that every update will have to create and destroy the laser beam. The best way to do this is to create a game object for the laser beam. This will allow it to be easily destroyed every update. We're going to use a line renderer to display the actual laser and attach it to the game object that we create along with it. I'm also going to create a list of vector threes to store each point of the laser beam. Now just follow along as I finish setting up the laser beam object. The next thing we need to do is add the line renderer to the game object that we create every time a laser beam is created. Now we can set the color of the line renderer along with the material and the width. Now that that's done, you can open up the shoot laser script that we created earlier. First, you want to create a public material variable and then also a laser beam variable. Then in the update method, we're just going to create a new laser beam every update. When you're done with that, add the shoot laser script to the laser pointer. Then create a new material for the laser beam. Set the shader for the new material as legacy shaders, particles, and alpha blended pre-multiply. Now attach the new material to the shoot laser script. Let's run it and see what happens. All right, so you can see that a laser beam is now being created every update. That's good, that's what we want, but it's not being destroyed. So all we have to do is go back into the shoot laser script and destroy the game object every update. To do this, we're gonna search for the game object that we create every update, and then we're gonna destroy it. Now, when we go back into the editor and we hit play, you'll see that there's only one game object now, which means it's working. Since everything is now working as expected, we can now start creating the actual laser beam. 
We're going to go back into the laser beam script and create a new method called cast ray. This method will have two vector three parameters being the position and direction. And it's also going to have a line renderer parameter being the laser. I'm first going to demonstrate how the line renderer works. So I'm going to add a line to the cast ray function where we add the starting position of the laser pointer to the laser indices list. We will use this list of position points to update the actual line renderer. To do this, we need to create another method called update laser. First, you'll want to create a counter starting at zero. Then set the number of positions in the line renderer equal to the number of points that we have in the laser indices list. Now that the number of positions in the line renderer is equal to the number of points in the laser indices list, we can begin adding each position from the laser indices list to the corresponding line renderer positions. Now all that's left to do is to call the update laser method in the cast array method. Then we can run it to see if the position of the laser pointer is added to the positions within the line renderer. Now if we click play and we check the line renderer within the laser beam object, we can see that the position of the laser pointer is in the positions of the line renderer. Now open up the laser beam script again. And within the cast ray function, we need to create a ray and a ray cast hit. Now there are gonna be two conditions here. One, if the ray hits an object and one, if it doesn't. So in our if statement, we're gonna cast a ray that is 30 units long. That means if the ray hits an object, then we add the position of where it collides to the laser indices list, and then we update the laser. In our else statement, we simply just add a point 30 units along the ray to the laser indices list. I missed one thing. I just need to change the position here to the position of the hit. Now, if we go back into the editor and run it, we should see that we get a laser coming out of our laser pointer. Since the laser is working, we can add a cube to test our other if statement where the ray hits an object. As you can see, the laser is stopping at the cube, which is exactly what we want. However, if we rotate the cube, the beam stays in one spot, it doesn't reflect off the cube. And that's what we're gonna work on next. Now click on the mirror cube and call it mirror if you haven't already, and then give it a tag mirror. I had already created a mirror tag, so if you don't know how to create one, then go ahead and select add tag, and then add a mirror tag to the list. Now go back into the laser beam script, go ahead and get rid of everything that we have within the if statement of the raycast function. Then add in a new method called check hit. We will use this method to determine whether or not the raycast hit is hitting a mirror or another object. So scroll on down and start creating the check hit method. This method will also take three parameters. It will take a raycast hit, a vector three direction, and a line renderer. The first thing we're going to do within the method is to check whether or not the hit info is colliding with a mirror or another object. In the if statement, we check whether or not the game object that the ray collides with has a tag called mirror. So if it does collide with a mirror, we need to get the reflected direction of the beam. We can do this using the vector3.reflect function. This takes the direction of the ray and the normal of the surface that the ray hits. 
This then gives us a new direction that we can use to cast another ray using the cast ray function. And as you can see, this now has become recursive. Now, if the ray cast does not hit a mirror, we just simply add the hit point to the laser indices list and then update the laser. Now go back up to the if statement where we use the check hit method and then add in the parameters. Now in the editor, we can just go ahead and hit play and check to see if it works. You can see as we rotate the mirror in the editor, you can see that the beam is now being reflected. Now you can also rotate it around the Y axis to demonstrate that this also works in a three dimensional space. Now let's add some more mirrors and test whether or not the beam is reflected off of each one. Go ahead and hit play after you created a few more mirrors and then play around with them. As you can see that the beam is now reflecting off of each mirror within the scene. Man, that's how you create a laser in Unity. Uh, let me know if this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.